Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. It came to my attention over the past couple days that some of my pastor friends have been uh, going around and talking bad about me behind my back, uh, railing on me to other pastors and even other laymen of other churches, uh, poisoning people against me and accusing me of being, quote, ecumenical. Okay, now the reason that I'm being accused of being ecumenical is because of the film that I produced <clears throat> almost six months ago called Going Back to the Greek, where I teamed up with a Reformed Baptist pastor, Dane Johansson, here in the Phoenix area to make the film about the Greek language. And we went to Cyprus, did a bunch of soul winning, etc. And so because I teamed up with him and then I also attended a conference called the Text and Canon Conference where every speaker at the conference was an independent Baptist. Dane Johansson is an independent Baptist, but yet this somehow makes me ecumenical. Now, first of all, let me just say this. I am not a Reformed Baptist. I am not a Calvinist. I don't believe in TULIP. I don't believe in the predestination doctrine. I am strongly against the false predestination doctrine taught by Calvinists. But I believe that Pastor Dane Johansson is saved. He's a brother in Christ. I know him very well. He's my personal friend. And we don't agree on everything. I don't recommend his church. He doesn't recommend my church, but we're friends, okay? Now, this is what's so stupid. I don't even think these people understand what the word ecumenical means. The word ecumenical means worldwide and in regard to religion, it has to do with people who are like, you know, trying to bring multiple denominations together, interdenominational. And, you know, this is where you'll have like a presidential prayer breakfast where you'll have Methodist, Catholic, Presbyterian, Lutheran, Baptist, Pentecostals all coming together or something. How is it ecumenical to attend a conference where every speaker is an independent Baptist and to have an independent Baptist pastor friend in my town just because he's not a part of our movement and just because he has some doctrinal errors, okay? That's not ecumenical, that's ridiculous, okay? To, to call that ecumenicalism. But anyway, that's what these guys are saying about me and accusing me of. And uh, the, 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 the guys that I'm talking about, let me just come out and say this, you know, before I go any further. I'm talking about Pastor Michael Johnson and Pastor Manly Perry. Now, I wanna say this, Pastor Joe Major has also accused me and called me ecumenical, but I don't have any evidence of him going behind my back or anything. I mean, he actually came directly to me and talked to me about this. And, and so I'm not accusing him of any kind of, um, you know, um, behind my back, backstabbing. I'm not saying he's a bad person. You know, I love him, God bless him. I don't have anything uh, bad to say about him except for the fact that, you know, calling me ecumenical is a false accusation. But Manly Perry and Michael Johnson have been doing this behind my back for a very long time, okay? I have multiple people contact me, multiple witnesses tell me that they have gone behind my back. You know, Manly Perry already broke fellowship with me months ago, but even before that, he was going around and talking to pastors behind my back, just nitpicking me, telling them everything that was wrong with me, all while pretending to be my friend. And, and, and look, Manly Perry's the biggest hypocritical flatterer. He preached a sermon called Why I'm an Andersonite, which is a stupid sermon. Why would anyone pronounce themselves to be an Andersonite? Especially in light of the fact that he's going around behind my back talking bad about me. Okay, that's super weird. Okay, we're not Andersonites, we're Christians, we're Baptists. And you know what? This is not some weirdo cult where we can only be friends with people that are part of our movement or whatever. I can be friends with whoever I want. I can be friends with pastors from the old IFB. And if I find a Reformed Baptist pastor that's King James and right on salvation and wants to go soul winning, then you know what? I'm gonna be his friend. And if people don't like it, they can go jump in a lake, okay? This cult-like attitude that acts like people who are only in our circle of friends are the only true Christians or something is, is, is stupid and bizarre. And calling yourself an Andersonite is stupid and bizarre because there's nothing, literally nothing that I preach that's unique to me or new, okay? So isn't it interesting that the same guy who pronounces I'm an Andersonite, the same guy who kneels down next to my mom's chair, I, I preached in Sacramento, 
He kneels next to my mom's chair and says, would you pray over my sermon, Mrs. Anders? You know, he, he asked my mom to, to pray over his sermon because he's such a flatterer, like because he's gonna get the power of God from my mom's uh, prayer or something. And I believe he did the same thing to my dad as well, okay? And look, I love my mom and dad and, and they're, they're great people and, and they're wonderful Christians and I have nothing but respect for them, but that's a flattering, bizarre thing to do, okay? In light of especially the fact that he has totally broken fellowship with me and that it turns out he's been talking crap about me behind my back for a long time. And then Michael Johnson, you know, Pastor Michael Johnson has never said a cross word to me to this minute. Nothing but smiles and handshakes and he has never had a cross word with me. He's been nothing but nice to me and friendly, but yet I had multiple people contact me yesterday saying that he called them repeatedly railing on me. Another guy said, man, he was coming after you hard to me. You know, then I, I, I listened to his sermon from Wednesday night and he's saying, yeah, there's fundamental Baptists that are holding hands with Protestants and I'm not gonna fellowship with them. Hashtag ecumenicalism, Calvinism. Well, isn't that interesting? Because you've never told me that, Pastor Michael Johnson. You know, you get up and scream about how you're not gonna have fellowship with me, but yet you have seemed to have fellowship with me. I have tons of people telling me what you're saying about me behind my back. I mean, this is insane. This is ridiculous. With friends like these, who needs enemies? Now you say, well, why would you do this? Why would you say this publicly on YouTube? I'll tell you why. Because if these guys are going around behind my back, just going to pastor and layman alike, talking crap about me, then you know what? They ought to be called out publicly. The Bible says, you know, that when it comes to a false accuser, them that sin rebuke before all that others also may fear. If people are gonna go behind my back and pretend to be my friend and smile and flatter me and be nice to me while stabbing me in the back, then they ought to be called out for it. And so that's what I'm doing right now. And I also just wanna explain something about the new IFB. It doesn't exist. There is no new IFB, okay? When we talk about the new IFB movement, that's just a colloquial term that we're using just to kind of talk about pastors that we like, pastors that we're friends with. It's not some organization, okay? And, and let me just explain something to, to those of you who are part of this so-called movement who think that this is some kind of a cult or something. Did you know that Christianity existed before 2005? That great soul winning was being done before 2005? That there are all kinds of other groups and other churches and other great soul winning movements throughout history that have done great things for God? And that even right now, outside of our group, there are a lot of other people doing soul winning, preaching the gospel, serving God. And so don't get this weird cult-like view where if people don't agree with us on everything, then they're not saved. That's bizarre and wrong, okay? And 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 it's it, it, this this attitude of uh, just being so exclusive to to where we can only be friends with people in our exact group. You know, it's it, it's it's a bad attitude, okay? It, it's it's a dangerous and unhealthy attitude. You know, when I travel around on mission trips and go to other countries, you know, I visit the local Baptist churches and many times I'm blessed by them. They're, you know, I have a great experience. I'm edified and, and I don't just walk in. And, but, but I've been on mission trips. I'm just going to be frank here. I've been on mini mission trips with some of the people that we're friends with. And it's like before we even walk in the door of the church that we're visiting, it's like they already have a bad attitude about the church and they're just ready to pick it apart and find everything wrong with it. Whereas I'm going in wanting to like it, you know, and, and wanting to be blessed, okay? So, you know, I wanna just clear that up right away. And then the other thing I wanna say is that, you know, when it comes to my relationship with my fellow pastors, I only have one kind of relationship with my fellow pastors and that's friendship. And I, I don't think that a lot of these people understand what that concept is, friendship. I think they're users and, and they wanna just basically use me and then they're gonna talk bad about me behind my back. And I'm, and I'm talking about people like Manly Perry and Michael Johnson, who basically use me to get a platform, they use my influence and, they, and to basically just get an audience. And then all they wanna do is just throw me under the bus. And, and let me explain how stupid it is. And again, back to this cult-like attitude, how stupid it is, you're so separated that you have to separate from Pastor Anderson. 
Like that's how separated you are. They're, they're like, we're you're too ecumenical. Look, if Pastor Anderson's too ecumenical, then you're too separated because you know I'm about as separated as you can get. Okay, give me a break. Okay, anybody who thinks I'm ecumenical just hasn't listened to my preaching. Okay, it's that simple. But you know what's funny? I'm in a state. Let me give an example. I'm in a state with seven million people, approximately. The state of Arizona, six and a half, seven million people. Guess how many pastor friends I have in my state of six and a half million people? One. But apparently for these people, that's one too many because he's not exactly like us and isn't in our exact group, okay? That's ridiculous to demand that level of separation. It's weird, it's overboard, it's over the top and ridiculous. And you know, uh, when it comes to friendship, you know, friendship isn't about making people do exactly what you want them to do and demanding that everyone be perfect and be like you. You know, friendship has to do with basically, you know, loving someone and and sharing life with them, okay? Uh, and, and you accept them for their faults. That's what friendship is. You don't expect them to be perfect or, or wanna just change them all the time, okay? You know, friendship involves, you know, loving someone, sharing life with them, and it's a pass fail type relationship. You know, it, it, either someone is someone that you can be friends with or not. You know, it, it's not like, it's not like, well, you can be my friend, but you know, you need to abide by these rules that I'm gonna set for you and I'm gonna make sure and, and police you and critique you. It, that's not friendship. I mean, and folks, you that are watching this video, you don't even have to be a pastor to understand that that's not friendship, okay? <clears throat> you know, it's a pass fail. You know, it, 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 if I look at a pastor and I think, okay, you know, this is someone I could be friends with, then, then he's my friend, you know, and it's that simple. And I'm not gonna, spend my life trying to change him. He's not trying to change me. We're not gonna talk crap about each other behind each other's back, you know? We're, 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 we're gonna uh, love each other and be kind to each other and, and be a blessing to each other. That's what friendship is. So, you know, these professional business relationships with other pastors, I'm not interested in those kind of uh, relationships because of the fact that, you know, <laughs> This isn't a denomination or something where we have like some network where we're connected to these pastors. You know, if they're, if they're pastors I like, then I'm gonna reach out to them in friendship. If they like me, they might reach out to me in friendship, but you know, they need to understand what friendship actually means. You know, a man that has friends must show himself friendly and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. This kind of quote unquote friendship where you're making phone calls behind someone's back and talking bad about them and trying to turn people against them, getting up and preaching these vague sermons about, you know, these certain fundamental Baptists that are yoking up with, with Protestants, you know, which is was supposedly me because of attending a conference where every speaker is an independent Baptist, okay? And, and by the way, you know, so these guys uh, are, are calling me ecumenical, all three of them. Manly Perry said, you know, the conference is ecumenical. And I, and I said, how is that ecumenical if every speaker is an independent Baptist? He posts a picture of a lit, uh, of someone talking about the, the event that I went to, the Text and Canon Conference. I just went there and listened. And you, you know why I went to the Text and Canon Conference? Because it was super interesting and I learned a lot, okay? I was basically going there because they're, they're teaching all this information. It was all these seminars about why the King James is correct and why the Greek text underlying the King James is the correct text. And they were going through all this really complicated and deep, like historical data and everything. And, you know, I thought it was super interesting and learned a lot, okay? So excuse me for getting some education about the text of scripture and about the history behind the King James version. I like that kind of stuff, okay? But anyway, his proof that this conference was an ecumenical conference was basically someone after the fact saying, oh, here's who we had attend the conference. We had Reformed Baptists, we had Primitive Baptists, Fundamental Baptists, some Evangelicals, and a couple Presbyterians. Sounds pretty ecumenical to me. Okay, well then guess what? That means every conference I've ever preached at has been ecumenical, if you're gonna go by who attended the conference. I mean, every time I get up to preach anywhere across America, 
people from other denominations show up. You know, I was preaching at Pastor Tommy McMurtry's church in Illinois, and a guy walks up to me with his girlfriend and tells me he's a Roman Catholic. And you know what I told him? I say, well, hey, I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad that you're listening to my preaching. God bless you, you know, for, for coming and, and wanting to learn about this stuff. Because I'm hoping that that guy's eventually gonna get saved and leave the Roman Catholic Church. I was preaching for Pastor Jason Robinson in West Virginia and I had a guy come up to me. He was a Calvinist and he said, but I love your preaching. I listen to your preaching. I'm a big fan of your work. Okay, so I've had people visit us at Faithful Word Baptist Church. Just recently, we had a guy come from the local Greek Orthodox Church. In fact, he came to like three or four services. He was wearing a giant Greek Orthodox cross around his neck and showing up to hear me preach. And you know what? I was kind unto him. I gave the gospel to him uh, before the service. I, I, I witnessed him through the whole plan of salvation. Uh, I was friendly to him. I was nice to him. I was glad to see him come back a second time, a third time. I guess we're ecumenical now at Faithful Word Baptist Church because we have visitors who are Greek Orthodox. We have visitors who are Pentecostal. We have visitors who are Presbyterian, Methodist, Lutheran. I mean, we have all of the above showing up. In fact, I actually speak at a local community college, okay? And I speak to all manner of people in that community college, most of whom are not saved, most of whom are not a Baptist. And you know, the, the teacher of that community college has actually shown up to our church many times and he's brought a bunch of students with him before who are interested in you know learning more about our church as part of their studies. And we've had Mormons show up at our church. We have all these people showing up. Folks, that's not ecumenical to have a bunch of people of other denominations attend a conference. Okay, otherwise every Framing the World conference and every conference I've ever preached at in my life has been ecumenical if we're gonna go by who's visiting. But you know what? I guess we're just supposed to be just these independent fundamental Baptists just preaching to each other, patting each other on the back, us for no more. Well, you know what? Hang that. I'm actually interested in reaching people and I'm actually interested in talking to people outside of our group. Okay, and no, I'm not ecumenical. No, I will not team up with Presbyterians, Lutherans, Methodists, Catholics, Muslims, Jews, Hindus, Buddhists. But you know what? There's nothing wrong with me teaming up with an independent Baptist who's right on salvation, right on soul winning, and King James only, and teaming up with him. That doesn't make me ecumenical. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. It's nonsense. I mean, to take separation to those kind of ridiculous extremes, okay? Or, or to say, well, I'm not, another pastor told me, he said, oh, well, Pastor Manley Perry won't fellowship with me because I shared your Going Back to the Greek documentary on my Facebook wall. I mean, it's like, that's the kind of extremes that these guys are going to. And, and, and the thing that makes me the maddest about it is how they're backstabbing, going behind my back, friendly to my face, super flattering, why I'm an Andersonite and all this junk. Would you pray over my sermon? Pastor Anderson's mom, Pastor Anderson's dad. It's, 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 it's weird, okay? Flattering and then turning around and I, and I find out from tons of witnesses that you're going around talking behind my back and criticizing me every chance that you get. Okay, it's garbage. And again, just to be clear, I'm talking about Pastor Michael Johnson and Pastor Michael and Pastor Michael Manley Perry. Okay, that's his real name. Pastor Michael Johnson and Pastor Michael Manley Perry, that's who I'm talking about, okay? And again, I'm not accusing Pastor Joe Major of this because I, I, I have no evidence of him, you know, uh, with this kind of underhanded dealings, okay? Of, of lying about me behind my back, criticizing me behind my back, pretending to my face to be one thing. Uh, the, you know, my only issue with him is that he's breaking fellowship with me over something so stupid and that he's accusing me of being ecumenical, which anybody who opens a dictionary and looks up ecumenical, they're not gonna find a picture of, of me next to that entry. And, and I looked up ecumenical on dictionary.com, it had six definitions, none of them apply to me, okay? And so I'm calling this out because I'm not just gonna sit back and allow people to use me and ride my coattails and literally fill their church. I mean, Old Path Baptist Church in San Antonio, Texas is filled with people that 
found out about him simply because they heard my preaching online. And then this guy's gonna go around just talking crap about me and how bad I am. Last time I checked, the tree is known by his fruit, okay? A tree is known by his fruit. The good tree brings forth good fruit. The evil tree brings forth corrupt fruit. So if I'm supposedly so bad, then what does that say about your church, Manly Perry? Since by your own admission, it, 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 it was started 100% filled with people who listen to my sermons. If, if I'm this bad person, supposedly. That makes absolutely no sense because the tree is known by his fruit. Okay, so, you know, you're gonna sit there and use me as your friend, okay? And then sit there and, t and turn around and just accuse me of all this. And, and, and the people, well, you've changed, Pastor Anderson. Really, I've changed? That's funny because if you look at some of our other films, you'll notice that our films include people like Kent Hovind, Chuck Baldwin, Tex Mars. Are those guys independent, fundamental, King James, soul-winning Baptists who agree with us on doctrine? No, I mean, you know, we could uh, we could sit there and point out the doctrinal errors in guys like Tex Mars who passed away recently, but you know what? I still believe Tex Mars is a great man of God and, and he was a sincere, godly man. I liked him and, 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 you know, I was sad to hear of his passing and I love Chuck Baldwin. You know, these guys agree with us on everything? No. And, the, you know, they are just as doctrinally different from us as Pastor Dane Johansson, but nobody batted an eye at them being included in our films. You know, yeah, but, you know, you got this Martin Luther quote at the beginning of going back to the Greek, you know. Oh, I guess you didn't notice the references to Martin Luther in After the Tribulation, New World Order Bible versions, Marching to Zion. I guess you didn't notice in Marching to Zion the quotes from John Chrysostom, John Calvin, and Martin Luther. I guess you didn't notice the 10-minute segment in New World Order Bible versions about Protestants and the Geneva Bible and all those. I, I guess you, you missed all that. Okay. No, the truth of the matter is I am doing the same stuff I've been doing. Look, obviously everybody grows and learns, but you know what? I think I, I think I've been pretty consistent over the last 14 years and that's why all my 2006 and 2007 sermons uh, you know are still online people still listen to them people still like them because of the fact that you know I was teaching 99% of the same stuff back then as I'm teaching now now obviously I've learned some new things but I have not changed my position on the King James Bible I have not changed my position on predestination or Calvinism. I'm still, I still don't believe in it, okay? And you know what? Here's what I believe about the King James Bible. I believe that the King James Bible is the word of God without error. That's what I've always taught, okay? I believe that the King James Bible is the inspired word of God. For the English speaking world, that's our Bible. It's preserved, it's perfect, it's without error. If that's not King James only enough for you, then you're a lunatic. If you're gonna sit there and say, oh, the spell, we gotta keep the spellings a certain way. Well, that's that's interesting because the spelling has already radically changed since 1611. You know, if you look it up in the 1611, everything's spelled way different. You know, or, or oh, you know, and, and then uh, somebody tried to say I'm changing on the King James because I said that you could swap eternal with everlasting and vice versa because they both mean the same thing. Folks, I've always said that. I've always spoken multiple languages since I was about 17, 18 years old. And when you speak multiple languages and, and when you have, like I have, worked as a professional translator before, you understand that things are not gonna be word for word from one language to another. They're not gonna be literally translated, okay? And the King James Bible is not a literal translation, okay? There are many times when it's not literal, but it's a perfect translation. It's a correct translation. It's an accurate translation because the best translations are not literal. Literal translations are horrible. They sound terrible. Okay, so my position on the King James is, is identical to what it was a decade ago, okay? And yeah, I'm not a Calvinist. I'm not becoming a Calvinist. I'm never going to become a Calvinist. I don't believe in predestination in the sense that they teach it, and I never will. But can I have friends outside of our movement, whatever that means? You better know I can. And so I know, you know, this is not a, a fun subject, but I have the right to defend myself when I find out that there's a campaign going on behind closed doors to try to turn other pastors against me and to turn 
people against me in general. And so, you know what? If these people don't like being called out publicly, then they shouldn't have attacked me privately because at least I have the decency to do things out in the open. God bless you. Have a great day.